Okay. Yes, okay. you are. Go ahead, please. So, thank you all for joining the discussion, and uh, let us carry on from where we, you know, ended our discussion yesterday. And yesterday we spoke about what is the importance of performance management. How do we value the requirement? How do we analyze it? And what are the benefits of transfer pricing and profitability, including the dependency between the two solutions or the two modules? Anyone has any doubt before we go ahead to the next module? Before, because I have a couple of questions before we take it uh, forward. Yes, Antonu. Uh, I was repeating, we spoke about transfer pricing and profitability. We understood what is the importance, what is the meaning of or rather the objective of this particular modules and how best it is going to help the bank. We spoke about the offsite platform, then we spoke about these two particular modules. So before I start my discussion, I would like to hear from you. Have you all, uh, you know, gone through it? If you have any open items, let us discuss that. Then we can take it forward. But before we take it forward, I have a few questions to ask. Then we will continue with ALM and LRM. This is just to understand how best we understand the solution or the visualization aspect. It is all about, I hear something from a bank or any uh, representative from a bank side and if I am able to visualize which solution fits into the requirement, it will help us, you know, carry out the business or our activities. So I would like to hear from you first, then I will continue with ALM and LRM for now. I hope uh, I don't uh, hear uh, from Sayed first and I would really be happy if people who did not speak yesterday, they come up with their understanding today and we take it forward from here. Darshan, Honest, Yuganji, Me, Naresh, and Vinod, I am expecting to hear from you guys. Hello. So we're going to continue with our discussion. Who's coming up first? I'm still waiting. Jamil spoke yesterday. I'm willing to hear from people who did not spoke yesterday to continue the discussion forward. Tell me. Yeah, team, I'm waiting. This has been a clear indication to me. Until unless I hear from you guys, I'm not. I'll not be able to take it forward for other modules. We need to make sure we understood. We have some visualization about the subjects what we discussed yesterday, and this will help us to take it forward from here. Yes, Rabi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I'm not uh, hearing from you, Sayed, for now. <laughs> I'm oh, waiting for fine. people who spoke yesterday. <laughs> oh, fine. Uh, Somya, can you please uh, unmute and unmute it? Yes. 
Hi, Rabi. Yeah, hi, Andrew. Uh, good afternoon, Rabi. Uh, I think I know a bit about, uh, I think I remember uh, most of it, what we spoke about yesterday. Uh, yes, okay, I is not a uh, participation, but I am really requesting people who did not speak yesterday, I am requesting them to speak up. We spoke, we had a couple of discussions yesterday. I am honestly requesting yes. people who did not speak up yesterday. Okay, all right, thank you. We are close to 20 people now, so I am expecting few people to, yeah, come up and we take it forward from here. It's all about understanding the solution, how best we understood it, if at all any open items, we can discuss that and we take it forward. Because until unless we understand the concepts or the models what we discussed yesterday, it will be very difficult for us to, you know, discuss asset liability management or ALM, LRM. These are all very critical areas or solutions which, you know, uh, carries optimum importance in terms of banking reporting or assessing the risk what the bank carries. So may please make sure whoever is raising the hand, please unmute them so that we can discuss the topics. Uh, can you, uh, hello? Yes, please. Yeah, this is Chagagni, this side. Can you just, uh, you know, like give me a brief on what is a direct and an indirect expense? I keep on getting confused on that. Okay. Direct expense and an indirect expense of the bank, of the bank, exactly. Yes, thank you, Jaganji. I really appreciate your question and this is a very basic question but it carries a lot of importance to understand these solutions irrespective of at least transfer pricing and what is profitability. So when I yeah. talk about uh, direct income, mm -hmm. it is nothing but which carries or which involves interest whether the bank pays interest or the bank receives interest. That I handle in transfer pricing but apart okay. from that if I talk about fee incomes or any kind of expenses like salary, rent, electricity, other things, that is all the indirect items, be it income or expenses. So direct income and expense I handle in transfer pricing, all indirect items I take it into profitability. Okay, okay. okay. And end of the day, summation of all this gives me a true profitability for the bank on multiple dimensions, be it product, customer, line of business, RMs, or any other dimension the bank wants to look for. Okay, thank you. It was a very good question, Givanji. I'm waiting still from people. I hope uh, this was understood by everybody. I'm expecting from others. Then we move to ALM and LRM then. Darshan, can you, are you able to hear us? Darshan, honest. Hey, hi. Hi. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I can hear you very well. I also have you. Let me know your understanding and if you have any issues. Sorry, there's no problem. Because that is very critical what we discussed yesterday. And um, I'm so sorry, Ravi, I couldn't hear you. Okay. What I'm saying is, uh, the topics of the models what we discussed yesterday, it is of prime okay. importance. So, okay. uh, if we could discuss few items or your understanding on this, then we take it forward for other models. Yes, we we, bas we basically discussed on the profitability. We basically discussed on the uh, like you know how how do we how do we come out with the in, in, like you know. <laughs> There's a lot of commotion here actually. Okay, no problem, no problem. I can hear you. you hear uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so we basically we, we discussed on how do we actually get the profitability uh, and what are the... Uh, and Hello? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Please go ahead. So we can hear you. Uh, yeah. 
so uh, like all this ex uh, all the expenses how do we uh, how do we calculate uh, i mean how do we get the indirect expenses direct expenses and um, like you know and basically like you know the complete uh, i mean when 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 uh, how how the exactly like you know how 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 how, how much uh, a bank will be giving the loan and how will the money be this one the complete module we actually understood Okay. No, this one. Any other views, guys? Any other views? Few points highlighted by Darshan. I am going to, you know, add up few things what you said. But before that, I want to hear from others also. Matthew, May, Naresh, Vinod, Jiver. I am still waiting from you guys to hear from you. What is that? Yeah? How do how do I speak? Yeah, Matthew, I can hear you. <coughs> Let's go ahead. Well, I'm not able to hear you properly. A lot of breaks. So I'm not getting a continuous. I'm just getting the headphone properly. Okay, okay, but uh, uh, you got my question right, Matthew. I mean, uh, in the meantime, they rectify your connection. If you could uh -huh. share your understanding also on the two models what we discussed yesterday. It will help us. Yeah, I mean, after this time, I think you know, we we could understand uh, the how the basically the profitability is made for uh, you know, for uh, in a transaction basis or type of uh, business bank do and uh, how they'll take take care of their uh, uh, what we call the the fund allocation, which is I think you know which is very crucial for the bank to sustain. Mm -hmm. Uh I guess that is it. I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your input, uh, Matthew. Uh, Vinod. Vinod, there. Hello. Yeah, Vinod. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead with your understanding, please. Hello. Yes, please. I can hear you. Hello. Yes. Yeah, it's honest here. Yeah, hi, honest. We were waiting for you. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, yesterday, uh, what I understood uh, is uh, on transfer uh, on transfer pricing. Uh, mm -hmm. Banks are able to to exactly know how much uh, the the cost of uh, them getting an income, and they're able to 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 price the to price their okay. loans or uh, add an interest on the loans in order to realize a profit because for them to realize a profit they must know how much they they spend on getting the, uh, the income excellent sorry uh, very good uh, input very good input honest so it is basically what you are trying to refer is as a bank i should know what is my cost of borrowing what while i accept deposits from people it is nothing but a borrowing for the bank how much I am paying them as interest and how much I am earning interest from the loans what I create. So this will basically decide the margin or spread what I earn from this activity, lending and borrowing activity, isn't it? Excellent, yes, uh, honest. Yes, that's right. And uh, Naresh, you know what? Yeah, uh, <coughs> Rabi? Yes, please. Hello. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, can you explain in detail a, a bit on how um, profitability and uh, FTP are used in risk calculation, overall risk calculation for the bank? So how do they okay. contribute to the risk calculation? Okay. So I had asked a similar question yesterday saying what are the few broad categories in OXA? So as Sayed answered yesterday, uh, we had four broad categories, performance, risk, compliance and customer insight. So when yes. we talk about transfer pricing and profitability, we are talking about only performance management. I in no way relate this to risk. Risk is where if I take money from public or I give that money to public as a loan, there is a counterparty risk. But as I said yesterday, 
the basic activity for a bank is borrowing and lending. So transfer pricing and profitability is only related to this activity where interest rate is involved, whether interest earned or interest expended. The differential is my margin. This yes. is one concept and when I talk about drift, there are other models to this which we are going to discuss today. So there is no way relation between these two. But yes, when we talk about integration of 64 modules, 64 plus modules which is available in OPSA, yes, there is an, you know, dependency or we can say there is an interlink available between all these modules. But to separate it together, performance only speaks about profit or loss, what the bank earns or incurs based, you know, during the course of the lending and borrowing activity. And when I report something to the regulator, this is what I risk I carry out of my exposures. So these two topics are a bit different. Okay. All right. I uh, thank you for the that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So let me, uh, I mean we had few items what we discussed now. So if I want to summarize this, it is a very simple thing of simple, simple concept of interest rate wherein either it is from borrowing or it is towards lending that is dealt with in transfer pricing which gives me nothing but my margin or spread. If I take into account the other expenses while carrying out my day to day activities as a bank that I take into account in profitably. Combination of these two, the output of these two solutions gives me the two profitability dimensions wise. So now Ankit you were speaking something. The question is, when I say dimension, what do you understand by dimensions here? Ankit, are you able to hear me? We spoke about margin, yeah, which hi. is coming out of transfer pricing. We yeah, spoke hi. about expenses. Yes, Ankit, please. Yes, we did. Yes. Uh, what happens is, um, uh, for instance, when, um, when the two banks are actually lending, now what happens is bank takes the monies from the uh, customer and then he lends it out to uh, the borrower. So uh, the, the, uh, the, the interest what is earned in between these two is the, is the profit yes. margin. Yes, exactly. Excellent. And, and uh, uh, my question was, uh, Ankit, uh, one step ahead from this, you know what is transfer pricing, you know what is profitability and how we yes. compute. Now, right. we have a profit in place. So when right. I say, I can view that profit in a 360 view. If you visualize my earlier slide, earlier, uh, previous day, you would see I have explained, uh, rather we have discussed this particular point, 360 view on profitability. Right. What does that mean? I can view that profit product wise. It is nothing but all dimensions, right Ankit? Product exactly. wise, it I is, can view if product is profitable. It is, it is, it is. It is product wise, it is also uh, what you call um, branch wise, it is also exactly. technically every every angle of from where the business is actually running, uh, it can actually be it can actually be bifurcated saying uh, so much of business, so much of profit has come from this segment, so much of profit has come from this yes. segment and then the entire margin is put together and then you then in that get, and that comes with the net profit. Exactly, you are pretty right Ankit, thank you for that. So it is nothing but I compare the profitability in a multi-dimensional approach. In various aspects, I am able to view it, which will help me make a decision what best, you know, task or uh, decision I should take to improve my business. Correct. So this is all about it. So we understood profitability, we understood transfer pricing, the concept, and what is the objective of these two solutions yesterday. Any any questions, or we take it forward from here? Uh, no questions, we should take it forward. Okay, thank you Ankit. Thank you. Uh, now, we speak about a different vertical in a bank. Yesterday we spoke only about profit or loss. Today we are going to talk about risk. And what is the risk? I, as a bank, give money to somebody, there is a risk, right? That person may not or may give me a risk. I mean, may not give me the money, what I have lent. So that is a risk. I can call it as a counterparty risk. It could so happen, as a bank, I lend money to multiple line of businesses. 
it could be manufacturing, it could be IT, it could be any other business. Based on economic slowdown, it might affect that particular segment. That is again a risk. So risk is all about money, what I have given to the people. It could be in various categories. That is all about risk. But as a bank, I maintain a cash flow. Cash flow is what? Cash flow is nothing but how much money I have in the opening of a period, how much inflows I got, how much outflows I make, and what is the closing balance. That we call it as cash flow. Any understanding gap? What is the cash flow? Because if we understand cash flow, I can, we can be, will be able to, you know, understand the concept of ALM and LRM very easily and quickly. If anyone has a has any doubt on cash flow or understanding gap on cash flow, please let me know. Okay, is it better now, Ankit? Okay? I hope there is no echo now. So as I said, cash flow is nothing but the inflow and outflow of funds and end of the day, how much cash I have to meet my obligations. If I try to summarize the description what I have, I, I had just now, if I come to asset liability management, asset is something which for which I have given money to the people as loans and liability is something which I owe to people who are my creditors. Asset liability management as a solution, it will cover three aspects to this. Liquidity, interest risk and basis risk. Liquidity risk we all understand, it is very clear. Interest rate is also very clear. Basis risk is something wherein I am talking about foreign exchange. When you say forex, it might happen in a day-to-day -day, day -day banking activity. I borrow in a foreign currency. To give an example, I borrow in USD and I lend in INR. There exists a risk because there is interest rate or exchange rate fluctuation would happen on a day-to-day -day basis. So these are the three areas, liquidity, interest rate and forex, which is covered under ALM. Any doubts? Ravi, I have a doubt. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, you said cash flow is basically the inflow and outflow of money into a bank, right? Yes. So, when you consider the inflow, do you also consider the groups income? Say a bank has, ICICI bank has a lot of subsidiaries, ICICI Direct, Lombard, etc. Okay. Yes. And uh, when you consider outflow, do you also consider the operational expenses that the bank incurs? to do their day-to-day yes. operations. Exactly. When I say cash flow, it is all about funds, irrespective of the source. Because end of the day, while doing the business of lending and borrowing, plus carrying out the, you know, meeting the expenses of the obligations, end of the day, what is the money left with me? I earn this much of salary out of this particular salary. Salary is nothing but an inflow to me and what all expenses I incur towards anything and end of the day what is my balance left over that is going to be reflected in ALM and that is nothing but liquidity to me okay so the all sources are considered yes all sources so when you say sources very good word used by you Jamil when you say sources it is nothing but inflow as a bank and you say uh, depth Development, that is nothing but outflow to the bank. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, somebody has a question, I think. Somia, can you see that? Please have a question. Jaita, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Ravi, see, my question is coming back to cash flow. Okay, so okay. will it uh, include the, uh, the direct expenses as well? Okay, um, now let me not term it or try to understand this concept. Uh, through indirect direct expenses okay I am okay. only saying as a bank I'm an entity right I'm a legal entity so anything going out of my pocket that is an outflow anything coming to me is an inflow okay 
So that is the concept of discussion yesterday, uh, you know direct indirect expenses or interest that was related to only transfer pricing and profitability. But today okay. we are only talking about cash. The biggest example is what is happening in India now, the demonetization effect. How much cash I am carrying that is more important. No, but of what you my question is, yes. yeah, see, the, let's say you are paying out and there will be some cash outflow, it, it could be indirect expenses or you know probably direct expenses or probably okay. indirect, you know. So there, okay. that is definitely going to impact your cash flow, right, uh, in the bank because there are some, right. you know. Yes, then the yeah. word, please. Yeah, so it's it's definitely going to impact the cash flow, whether it's indirect uh, income or expense or direct income or expense, right? So it's, there is an impact on the cash flow. Yes. Will not there be a cash flow in, uh, impact? Anything going out of my pocket will impact me. Will yeah. impact my ending balance. Okay. So ALM is a beautiful solution which gives you the true prop, uh, true position of how much cash you are holding on a day to day basis or on a periodic basis. So ALM is nothing about you know at the end of day to day how much cash I am carrying depending on the obligations because bank they get into contracts right. I create a fixed deposit for one year that is a contract. I give a loan for three months that is a contract. So it is not a reflection of today's cash. Maybe six months down the line, as of today, I am sitting on, uh, let's say, 1st of April 2017, ALM can be, give me a cash flow position for the next coming five years. Saying how much liquidity gap or surplus I am having today, how much surplus or liquidity gap I am having tomorrow or five years down the line also. So this kind of periods can be decided by the bank depending on what contracts they enter into. End of the day, ALM will give me what? liquidity position I have as a bank because the reason being why it is so important I know for carrying out my day to day expenses I need 1000 rupees. What if I am always carrying 10,000 rupees in my pocket that 9000 rupees is waste for me isn't it because I know my expenses are 1000 rupees while I am carrying 10,000 rupees that means I am carrying excess liquidity. Contrary, if I could park those 9000 rupees in bank, I would have earned some interest, isn't it? So ALM tells right. you what is your liquidity position and as a simple business scenario, there should not be excess liquidity into the system or in the bank or there should not be any shortage for cash in the bank. ALM as a solution will help you analyze that. Any any understanding app, it is a very simple example what I have given now. And if we could discuss further on this example, I hope uh, and I will be really confident that we all understand ALM very clearly. Any any questions or any anything you guys want to share based on your understanding? It will really help others. <clears throat> Who is coming first now? Okay, Ankit. One more example of ALM. Okay. We are going to talk about your salary account, Ankit. Is that okay? <laughs> Okay. Very important. So, <laughs> first of April, you got your salary and get. Okay. Okay. That is an inflow to you. That is nothing but source of funds for you. Source, right? From where you're getting your uh, money. After right. that, you have to meet your obligations like rent, expenses, blah blah blah. Inflow minus the total outflow. There would be a consolidated amount at the end of the day. That is what you are carrying, that is your liquidity cash and right. assuming you have 1 million in your account and there are a couple of outflows that happen and end of the day you have 200,000 in your bank left as a balance, that is nothing but the liquid cash you are carrying now. 
that is right. ALM. You have something in the beginning, something inflow came in, some outflow happened. After meeting all your obligations, there is something left over in your account. That is nothing but your liquidity position at okay. any given point of time. Okay, so that's access access liability management. Yeah, understood. Yes. Understood. Yes. Yes. So understood. because anything coming to you, that is inflow. Anything going from you, that is outflow. Inflow okay. minus outflow, that is your balance. Right. And if at all there is any shortage in this, that means outflow is greater than inflow. That means there is a liquidity crisis in the bank. Correct. Understood. And ALM will help you understand that. And ALM will give you a true picture of what is your liquidity position on a daily basis also. Okay, understood. Hope I answered your question, Ankit. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Ravi. And thank you very much for using your account as an example. No, no problem. You don't know the exact value still. <laughs> yes, any uh, other... Just, uh, yeah, Ravi, yes, just correct my observation, like uh, this asset liability management. So, uh, okay. if I see from the bank's perspective, mm -hmm. I have an asset and I have a liability. So, in a bank, Asset is the loan portfolio and liability exactly. is the deposit, right? Exactly. So this, yes. uh, uh, this solution will help us to understand like if I need to lend this many crores, how much yes. I should have the deposit? Exactly. And there is any a point of regulation on this? Yes. Sorry? Hello? Uh, Sayyid, uh, I am not able to hear now. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better, yes. Yeah. So this uh, particular model will help uh, us help the bank to understand like how to manage my asset, which is the loans, and how to manage my uh, liquidity, uh, liability, yes. uh, which is the yes. deposit. So based yes. on the central bank regulation, this model will be fine-tuned, and as per the bank's uh, policies, this uh, uh, this this asset and liability uh, can be managed with this model. When I say asset, it is. Uh, the loans and uh, liability is the deposit. I really appreciate uh, your understanding, Sayed. But you have you know moved ahead one step ahead what what we are discussing. I have not used the central bank concept now. When I come to LRM, I'll use that. But for now, what you explained is very much in line with what is our discussion now. So when I come okay. to regulatory aspect, that is nothing but the liquidity risk management concept. And you have touched upon that particular point now. So when I say ALM, there is nothing called regulatory in the system. All about my day-to-day -day activities, be it inflow and outflow, and what is the cash I'm carrying end of the day. When I say about liquidity risk, I need to take care of the regulatory obligations or the regulatory requirements or the maintenance depending on the rules available in specific geography. After that, how much cash I'm carrying. That is the difference between ALM and LRM. Okay. Thank you, Said, uh, for pointing out that particular uh, uh, line. Anything? Somebody has raised a question. So, may can you unmute? Unmuted all. Please go ahead with your question. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. Somebody has a question, please. Yes, Antonio, go ahead. You, you have a question. Santanu, please go ahead. You are unmuted. Yeah, Ravi, uh, you said that uh, ALM is uh, typically true position of a bank, uh, like true position uh, of cash flow in a bank uh, that it holds, right? So, yes. uh, just yes. wanted to know if uh, first first question is uh, is it time bucketed like uh, can i exactly. can a bank can a can a bank measure on a particular day what is the alm position or it is, mm. is it like for 3 years 4 years time time span also it can give a result exactly. is it time bucketed? exactly yes this analysis happens in the form of time buckets and that i'll explain little later and but you have rightly pointed out it is on a bucketing basis how much liquidity i am carrying on each period Exactly. Excellent question, uh, Santana. It is on bucketing basis. Okay. So, is it is is it uh, like uh, is is it variable? Like, it, the bank has a flexibility to you know choose 
between months and years or how is it like or does it have a standard of three years? It is depending on two aspects, okay. What happens is as an ALM, I will not restrict you or as a bank to maintain one particular bucket. You can maintain three buckets at any given point of time. One is for the regulator. Let's say RBI as a regulator, local regulator in India, it says you to follow this bucket. You follow that bucket. I give you another bucket which is internal review for you and you can add as many buckets as you want in ALM solution and you can view the results in different bucket wise also. Okay. And there is no limitation to this. You can create your bucket for the next 99 years also. Okay, okay. And it is a very good point highlighted by Santanu. We spoke about bucketing, time bucketing. Anyone has any doubt on time bucketing? Because it is very, very important. Please try to, you know, raise this. It is very important if we understand time bucketing, it is going to help a lot. Mother sir, welcome to the session. Yesterday you were not available. If you could share your understanding so far. Sir, can you hear us? Can you unmute? Uh, yeah, Ravi? yeah, Ravi, I unmuted all. I unmuted all. Okay. 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 Ankit has a question. Time bucketing. Yes. Anyone wants to explain it before I throw some light on this? I would really appreciate somebody, you know, I try to explain what is time bucketing or what is the concept of bucketing. I'm not hearing still from me. Then Mother Sir, Naresh, and Susil also joined now. Anything, anything, your understanding on the concept what we discussed so far. No one? Okay. Santana, if you could elaborate on your understanding on bucketing so that, you know, I can add few more points to that and uh, Ankit has a question on this particular concept, sure. uh, Santana. So, uh, as for my understanding, because uh, I was associated with a risk management firm earlier as well, so what I could uh, you know, decipher out of your uh, uh, presentation, it's basically a collation uh, of assets and liabilities over a period of time, for example, say six months or three months as per the requirement of the bank and it might bucket it in, in time frames and uh, accordingly uh, the bank can know what is the true position of a cash that the bank is holding, whether it should lend more or borrow more. That is my understanding. Perfect, Santana. Uh, let me give you all a very simple example, okay. Assuming Ankit you have some liquidity cash available with you and you don't require it in the near future. So what do you do as a retail person? You go to a bank and request the bank, I want to create a fixed deposit. We have all done it in our life. Now you want to know what is the rate of interest you are earning on each period. Let's say there is a percent of the interest for one year, B for two years, C for three years, D for five years. So that is nothing but a bucket. One year, two year, three year, four year. These are all buckets to us. We get the slabs in every bank, isn't it? Ankit? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Ankit. Yep, I mean, uh, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, go ahead, Claire. No, no. Uh, so what you're trying to say is that if I actually um, earn 5% uh, interest in the first year and 6% in the second year and the third year 7%, uh, this will actually tell me the average of all these three years or it's no, no. Three give no average. exact figures? No average. I'm only giving you the bucket. First year is a bucket, second year is okay. a bucket, third year is a bucket. So, okay. time bucketing concept is nothing but I'm standing today. Today is 24th, right? 24th right. of November. From here, one month. What would be my liquidity position? That is one bucket. From 24th of November, two months. What would be my liquidity position? That is one bucket. From 24th November 2016 to one year, what would be my liquidity position? That is a bucket. Okay. Okay. Understood. So I Understood. consolidate all the contractual obligations, be it inflows, be it outflows. The end result is my liquidity position on any given bucket. And this bucket starts from one day till 99 years also. Okay, understood. understood. Clear, Ankit? Yes, very clear. Yes. At the bank, I give you another very simple example. I am a bank, you came to me, you created a fixed deposit for one year. So, in today's date, the money what you have given me for fixed deposit, this is the inflow to me as a bank. Right. But in the one year bucket from today, that would be an outflow for me. Right. I'll have bucket from one day to specified period, maybe 10 years, 20 years, depending okay. on the contract, contractual obligation, what I enter into with customers, I get to know my liquidity position. Then this is the concept of uh, liquidity in terms of time bucketing, which is Understood. handled in ALM. Understood. Thank, thank you so much. Any other questions, guys? Zubirbhai, anything from your side? I am still not able to hear from people who did not spoke yesterday and who haven't spoken Ravi, yet. Ravi bhai, I was not here yesterday, so that's <laughs> Okay, so how about your understanding today? We spoke about liquidity, we spoke about bucketing. Yeah. Any any doubts on this? No, no, that's clear. So bucketing is uh, all about time bucketing. I mean, that's a period uh, for uh, yes. this uh, time increment or interval used in planning and scheduling. So yes. So bucketing is nothing but in a particular bucket, how much of liquidity you are carrying, whether excess or shortage, depending or uh, depending on your inflows and outflows. That's it. Yeah. So that can be weekly, monthly, quarterly basis, correct? Yes. Yes. Depending on the way bank wants to create the buckets. There is no limitation to it. And a few instances you will see different regulators, they request banks to maintain different buckets. In India it is different, Europe it is different, America it is different. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I see a few members are uh, not tentative. So please um, attentive in this session. That is Somya to take a call. Somya <laughs> 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 is the most attentive. <laughs> I swear he is not a call. He is not attentive. <laughs> okay, please go okay, ahead. Okay, guys, that was on a lighter note. So, we spoke about uh, liquidity, we spoke about asset liability management, and as Sayyid highlighted, ALM coupled up, uh, coupled with regulatory regulations, that is nothing but LRM. Any doubt on this? It is very clear, and we have tried to make make it as simple as possible. So as I said, if you look at my slide now, it is nothing but a reflection of my liquidity, nothing but interest rate risk, nothing but basis risk. We spoke what is liquidity, what is basis, and what is interest. Interest rate risk is nothing but if I borrow at 4% and lend at 2%, there is a risk involved to it, right? It may so happen, I borrow in fixed and lend in floating. 
that could be a risk because if I borrow for five years at a fixed rate of interest and I lend it in floating, but the market goes negative. That means what I earn from my development less than what I am paying as interest to the people. So these are the risks associated with your funds. Your liquidity, interest rate risk and basis risk, these three, only these three elements are handled in ALM. Next point, inflow and outflow of funds on a periodic basis. Third point, it is very clear, timely and accurate reporting to regulators. We can run the ALM engine on a daily basis, we can throw up the results on a daily basis. Some regulators ask for daily ALM reports, some ask for periodic reports, so we can do that in the system. Inability to compute cash flow and do forecasting thereafter. We understood what is cash flow. ALM computed the cash flow, but assume if we do it on a manual basis, how difficult it is because we have to coordinate with so many people and if it is on a daily basis cash flow, we will not be able to report it on a timely manner. The second thing is, if I do not have the actual data with me, if I do a forecasting, that will go in vain. That is of no use to me, if the actual data itself is wrong. Then scenario building. You have your actual data with you. Based on that, you can create multiple scenarios, saying there was a repayment which was supposed to come, but that did not come. What will be your liquidity position? Assuming end of day to day, I have $100 with me and I am expecting $500 as inflow as a repayment from a customer. So I was expecting my end of balance for tomorrow would be $600, wherein the person who was supposed to repay me, he didn't turn up. What will happen? There is an expectation of $600 liquidity position for tomorrow but I end up with $100. So there is a shortage, right? Because what money I collect from people, I owe people also. I may have to give them tomorrow. How will I meet that? So that is a risk. So depending on any kind of business situation, I can create scenarios in my application and based on the contractual data or the actual data, I will be able to view what is my true position in terms of liquidity. Points clear or any other doubt so far? Because so far we have covered all the major aspects of ALM. Sayed, for you any, uh, any open items for you also? Or is all clear? Yeah, Janta has some okay. questions. Okay, okay, sir, go ahead. After that, Janta will. Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, Rabi, uh, see, now when you come to scenario building, this is based on the, some real time cases, right? Let's say you say, you know, there are some, you know, um, uh, inflow of 100, and there's, you know, uh, 100 that uh, you have a balance and you are expecting 500 but that did not come true okay and all yeah. that so, so bank will be uh, uh, kind of that data bank has to maintain it for have, for them to build up a scenario or, or how does it work uh, it, it is a very dynamic exercise what I can do I can do a broad level assessment and create a scenario otherwise okay. or certain you know terrific happened in the market related to any particular customer to whom I have a great exposure. I can create this scenario accordingly, be it on an individual basis or on a calculated basis also. Okay, so will the bank looking at some overall you know, market risk also when, uh, when they are building up the scenarios? Yes, yes, because end of the day all the models what we talk about, they are all interrelated. But right. concept wise we are trying to understand each module segment wise. Okay. Anyone else has a doubt? Uh, yes, yeah, Syed was uh, saying something. Please go ahead, Syed.
what I was saying, it was okay. Okay. There are a few people, they haven't spoken up yet. I request them to come up, please. Their understanding, either they have any doubt or what is their understanding so far on the subject. I really insist. So, May is online, right? May? May M? Yeah, yeah, Memo is online. Yeah, Memo, are you able to hear us? Hello? Rabi. Yes, please. Yes, May, what is your understanding? Any any open items for you? Any doubts or clarifications? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yesterday session I couldn't join. When I joined, the the the, the session was almost finished. So my understanding about the fund transfer fund transfer pricing is like to measure to measure the the deposit deposit uh, balance and lending balance. Is it is it true? I uh, guess in one context it is true. And when we talk about interest rate risk, that is related to transfer pricing and all other expenses or incomes, that is profitability. And yeah, how yeah. about your understanding today, May, on uh, uh, liquidity or the ALM concept what we discussed so far? You would like to highlight a few points on that? Yep. Uh, so, uh, my understanding about liquidity is like uh, to visible on the on the profit and cost. Okay. And uh, okay. Can you hear us, me? Yeah, 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 I can, I can hear. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, when I talk about ELM, it is about three elements. The first and primary is liquidity, then interest, and then foreign exchange. Somebody else was talking when we were talking to me. Please come up. Uh, well, it's honest, yeah. Yes, honest. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. I just want to take you back to time bucketing. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, uh, when I see among the challenges you've put here, uh, does the second point describe time bucketing in a more exactly. accurate way? Yes. Yes. Your funds? That is very, very specific to time bucketing. Exactly. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Because if it is closed, then I assume everybody or all of us will have understood what is ALM. Okay, so we continue our exercise the way we did it yesterday. I'm Lovely, going to I, have, I have a question. Yes, Lovely, I have a question. Yeah. See, there is something yes. called uh, call report file, you know, uh, filing by the banks to the uh, central bank, right? So, okay. so, just wanted to understand this ALM will take care of call reports uh, uh, kind of, you know, return or how is it? Okay, when you say call report, it is a terminology used for a particular regulator. Yes, okay. we, can, we can do it through ALM, very much possible. Okay. We can do that, right? Okay, right. Yes. Okay. Fine, fine, yes, yeah, thanks. The battery, it works in, in, in the... Yes, yeah. somebody is talking, please... Uh, yeah, you got you have a question, right? Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello. Yes, please. Yes. So it's here like the challenges that the banks that uh, comes in the slide is inability to compute cash flow and do forecasting thereafter. So the ALM and our liquidity risk management from EPM actually does this, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and then you have come to the point that forecasting of fund flows based on actual numbers. Can you throw a bit light on this part of it? Like how, okay. how can the forecasting of... Okay. It's a very good question, Yuganji. Uh, assuming I give you an example, 
I created my time bucket, I computed the cash flow and I am assuming I am having <laughs> the same example, $100 today, end of the day. I am I'm expecting or there is a contractual obligation from a customer by which he is supposed to give me $500 tomorrow. So if I take my opening balance and the inflow from tomorrow, tomorrow end of day cash balance should be $600. If that customer doesn't pay, that is a challenge for me and there is shortfall of liquidity over what I have anticipated today, depending on the business scenario. And that is an example to this. Are you able to hear me, Juganji? No. Okay, is it better now? Because I am much more closer to the mic. Uh, Somi, are you able to hear me? Yes, 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 Ravi, I, I, I will hear you. I am hearing you. Uh, you can hear better now? Okay, please let me know what. Ravi? Uh, yes, please. Ravi, uh, in this case, there will be obviously bucket mismatches. Uh, not bucket mismatch, points mismatch will happen. Bucket is going to be constant for you. See, I mean, uh, as per this one, obviously, like, you know, whatever the in inflow of the cash, that is, that mm -hmm. goes to one bucket and whatever the, this one, actual, this one, this, I mean, when it is, uh, there'll be, uh, I mean, that's what I feel is, a bucket. Okay. I meant to okay. be a bucket mismatch. Is what I I'll, I'll give you a very simple example, what a mismatch means, okay? I am expecting 100 as inflow and I am expecting 60 as outflow tomorrow, then what is your closing balance? 40. Any deviation to this, that is a mismatch. Or, yes. I am expecting 100, whereas I got 20, but I have to pay 40 tomorrow. That means okay. negative 20. That is a mismatch. That we call it as funds mismatch. So the context can be two ways. The two examples what I have given you. So what fine, fine. from bucketing point I would say there is a deficit or there is excess liquidity in a particular bucket than what I have expected today. That can be the statement for this. Okay. I know this is a bit complex and uh, since APM is an area which is critical for the banks and it is a, it is expected you know to take some time to have a visualization completely on the subject but I would really appreciate who all have any open eye of something we can discuss that and there will be multiple sessions wherein we can discuss the subject again and again if required. Yeah, gentlemen, as simple as possible. Yes, there were two people. One by one, please. Okay. Should I go ahead? Yes, I Okay. Ravi, just I wanted to understand, it may not be, you know, in the context of what you're saying. Uh, in a volatile market scenario, okay, so uh -huh. let's say now for the last, last 10, 15 days, what is happening in India. So what uh -huh. is that kind of you know, mismatch percentile now, okay, in terms of payout and, you know, and the receipt? Okay. Okay. It okay. is so actually positive general... mismatch which is happening now. Okay. Because, because a lot of cash coming in people or... are coming to deposit cash, which was unexpected. Okay. Whereas mm -hmm. since you are totally busy attending customers, you are not able to create loans in the same time. So what right. I have, I have enough cash with me. Wherein mm -hmm. I am paying interest to the customers, but I am not able to deploy that money to people as loans. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is so that is also mismatch. impacting the forecasting of funds flows now, right? Because all of a sudden these funds are coming in, right? So yes. it's definitely yes. impacting a bank in terms of what they have forecasted, you know, before uh, uh, that particular day, now and what is before happening is completely yes. Right. So it's very difficult yes. for bank to now again, you know, look into how they are going to, what they are going to do with these funds now, or, right? Yes, exactly. As I gave you the example in the beginning of the session, I right. want only 1000 rupees as expenses per day, but what mm. if I carry 10,000 in my wallet every day? 
there is a right. surplus of 9000 if i park it in a bank i would have got interest but i am losing that opportunity cost that is mm. also a kind of risk which would have maximized my return but i am not earning it because that cash is lying idle with me okay so it could be a positive scenario it could be a negative scenario that okay. is why it is much more important to look into the liquidity aspect in any bank apart from transfer pricing and profitability okay so now Ravi, if bank has a solution like this and in this kind of unexpected events that that occur in the economy right okay. so yes. yeah is there any predictive thing that bank can look at okay this might come up you know based on some kind of scenario building or or anything of that sort can bank do anything which is predictive Okay, so when I talk about analytical solutions, I am here only to deliver reports as of such. Okay. Okay. Because we are so accurate, our systems are so efficient, I will be able to give you a true picture. Based on that, you have to take business decisions. We mm. only help people to take decisions. Mm. Okay. That is the this sole is the motto of analytics. Means, right? These are the unexpected, uh, yeah. unexpected events that come up. So, is there anything the bank can also kind of, you know, keep a track of what might be unexpected and that might create a business? Exactly. Yes, very much possible. And there is no limit to how many scenarios you can create in the application. As many as scenarios you want, you can create it in the application. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got. Thanks. Good, good points, uh, Jayanta. Yes, somebody else was uh, had some question. Okay, so I assume we have some understanding, a clarity on uh, liquidity, then ALM, and the difference between ALM and LRM. Thanks to Syed for the highlighting what is the major differentiator between ALM and LRM. Now I am coming to the next slide. Okay, there was a last point here. Complexity is due to different product profiles. I will give a very simple example. As I said, I went to a bank. I created a deposit for one year. So bank knows after a year that money is going to go out of the system or from the bank. Now, I give the example of savings account. Current account, savings account. We, we call it CASA. In CASA, there is no maturity date or there is no tenure fixed. So, how do I handle it? That is another product profile. So, how do you meet all these product profiles and build your cash flow? That is what the point says. Over a period of time, maybe a quarter or two quarters or three quarters, I take into account the data, the inflow and outflow of current account and saving account and I do a behavioral study of the system saying how much out of hundred dollars, how much is being left with the bank on any given point of day and how much is withdrawn by the customers from CASA prospecting. That is a product profile I spoke because fixed maturity products or contractual products we know there is an open date or start date and there is a maturity date but CASA there is no maturity because these are perpetual products there is no maturity date to this so how do I define how much of CASA money is going to stay with me and how much will be returned by the customers that is nothing but different product profiles and how do I handle it in the system example of that I hope People will have definite questions on this particular point. Your questions, please. These are all very critical items which I am trying to explain now. Yes, Darshan, tell me this. Uh, this is a little out of the way of, I mean, uh, question. No problem. Go ahead. Okay. You uh, sometime back you just told that you know this is an advanced uh, analytical engine. Other, I mean, more than uh, or like you know more than the this one, uh, other uh, other Oracle product. Yeah. Okay, but um, why why have they differentiated? 
because we are into a unified concept, we are not only catering to liquidity, I can cater to 64 plus areas as of today in OXA, which is a requirement for any bank. Depending on the budget, we can propose the solutions. I can cover as much as areas as possible, which is not handled by any other system in practice today, as of today. Okay. That was the context of that uh, discussion. And I think Kedar was, Kedar has highlighted this point yesterday and today also. Okay. Any other questions, please? Anything, anything? Uh, Ravi, when we say complexity is due to different product profiles, so whether this yeah. LM will observe only the uh, the issues or will it uh, throw some uh, ideas or throw some scenarios for how it can be rectified, how we yes. can remove the complexity? Yes. Uh, two examples what I have given, Sayed. One is fixed maturity products. You have a start date, you have a maturity date, which is very simple. Any application can take it, right? Now, I have given you the example of CASA, current account or savings account, where there is no maturity date. So, on give, any given point of day, you would have certain CASA balance in your uh, uh, system or in your balance sheet. How do you segregate that CASA balance in different time buckets? That we can design it in the system itself. Or there would be few products like, you know, there is a particular loan which is getting matured over a period of time. You pay on a monthly basis. There would be certain customers who, due to different challenges, they are not able to repay the loans. It might so happen, I am not paying continuously for one year and suddenly I come up and I pay the loan in one year. Again, that is excess cash flow to the bank. So these are all different product profiles which we can design, the models can be designed in the application to handle the maturity profile. And that is why I say each product profile is different. Some has a fixed tenure, some has indefinite tenure. And we can handle it in the system with multiple ways. Okay. Anything else? That's all fine now. Okay, so let me move forward. This is the context of ALM and LRM today, what we discussed. Now, I will be very specific and try to explain few more points on uh, each subject, okay. Please stop me if you have any open items to discuss. This slide is very, very important. If we understand this, there is nothing like it. And this is the uh, product suit, what we discussed yesterday. Uh, yesterday it was about performance management. Today we are talking about risk management. Wherein from offset perspective, ALM and liquidity both are coming under risk management module. And this is very theoretical in nature. So as I said, I am repeating it again. You might uh, you know, see this as a question in your uh, uh, polls or uh, questions, I mean, the test also. ALM caters to three areas, interest rate, liquidity, foreign exchange or foreign currency or basis risk. These are the three areas which ALM caters to. And these are the few bullet points, what you can discuss to the customers saying ALM handles market risk or economic scenarios. The stochastic or deterministic act for CASA. Prepayment is something I have given a loan to somebody for five years and that customer comes up after two years and says okay I have excess liquidity please uh, pre-close my loan. So it was an unexpected inflow to the bank which will only lead to excess liquidity in the bank's balance sheet. And single data model of the platform, we discussed it is nothing but the 
unified concept of uh, offset data model. Then customer level cash flow engine. As I said yesterday, I compute my transfer pricing or profitability at the most granular level. That is at the account level. Likewise, I can compute cash flow at account wise. Consolidate and see the complete cash flow of the bank on a consolidated basis. The powerful BI reporting, we know the reporting tool from Oxasuit, that is OBIEE, which will help us generate the reports. Objective wise, uh, Somia is going to share a couple of the slides with you. You can have a look at this in detail. And these are the few reports which I can show you. As I said yesterday, it could be numeric, you know, any kind of reports like pie charts or graphical reports or numerical reports we can view. And we can select a set of dashboards, what reports to be generated, how it should look like, the look and feel, everything we can decide in the application itself. These are a few sample reports. See, this is the detailed cash flow based on currency. Beginning balance, then any income, then outflow, those things. Very simple, self-explanatory reports. And the way the bank wants us to design it, we can design it. We can have cash flow product wise, as I said, multiple dimension wise, we can view the reports. This is an example of a product uh, cash flow report. Or uh, if it is not product, I want to see currency wise, what is my outflow, that also I can take care of in the system. Okay. So, are we all ready to start with the poll? Let us see what our understanding so far. Okay, here is the question. Guys, the poll started, requesting you to answer it. Very simple one, we have discussed now. <laughs> yes, somebody has a question, please. Soumya? Please go ahead. Who has raised the question? Yes, Antony is a person. Antony, please go ahead. Yes, Antony. Sir, yes. I, I, I understood the last uh, explanation what you what you mean. I was just saying that. Yeah. Fine. Okay. I'm really glad uh, we got a hundred percent voting in terms of uh, this particular question. So closing wow. it, I'm going ahead with another question. Guys, the voting started. Uh -huh. Oops, Somebody else has raised their hand. Yeah, Naresh. Uh, so me? Yeah, Naresh has raised their hand. Naresh, please go ahead. Yeah. Finally, there is a yes, Nareesh. Uh, I, uh, yes, I, I did. I, I did ask you a question earlier. It's not like I was okay. silent throughout. I'm, I'm sincere apologies, Nareesh. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, can you explain a bit about value at risk? Okay. Risk. What is risk? I understand, right? How yeah. much risk I carry at? any given point of time in terms of value, that is value at risk. Simple example, you are a bank, you have given me 2 million loan today. So what is the risk you are carrying? 2 million. After 2 months, I repay half of it. So what is the risk you are carrying today? 1 million. 
that is velvet risk. There are multiple elements which are involved in VAR which we should not discuss now because they know this is a discussion to understand the solution but I will be really happy I will be able to come I uh, will be coming to your desk and we will discuss in detail uh, in terms of various elements which is covered under VAR. This is value at risk. It is nothing but how much of value which is at risk at any given point of time. A simple definition of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, we can probably have a one-on-one -on -one discussion later. Yes, yes. But because that is going to be a bit complex in nature, which I don't want to include in this session now. Yeah, no problem. But to answer your question, how much of value or volume I am carrying at any given point of time, that is nothing but a risk to me. Given any particular scenario, what will be that particular bar amount? It is explained in bar. Okay. Okay. Uh, and how, do, how does it affect time bucketing and uh, Because of time bucket only, you will be able to carry out on which time bucket, how much of risk or value you are carrying, which is a risk for you, exposure for you. Okay. So these are all interrelated. If you do not have time bucket, you do not know how much of uh, your contract obligation, contractual obligations, which is coming as an inflow to you or it is going as an outflow from the bank's perspective. So time bucket is an element which is helpful to compute this particular attribute or particular, uh, you know, amount. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, that answers my question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nari. So this particular question of the ALM has the objective of increasing financial margin and aid net interest income through growth over interest rate cycle. There was a mixed response to this. When I said ALM, the objective was liquidity, interest rate risk and basis risk. So the question itself was related to interest. So it was a definite true the answer. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. These are few the reports. Now LRM also we have discussed liquidity gap. That is an area. If I say we have given or we have rather discussed this particular point today and saying we have time buckets based on the inflows and outflows there would be excess liquidity or shortage of liquidity if at all any gap in that that is called liquidity gap for each time bucket based on my contextual data I create multiple scenarios and do analysis that is scenario analysis then contingency funding Contingency is not certain. It may happen, it may not happen. That is why we call it as contingent assets. You know, sometimes there could be a scenario, I have given it of something, but I have written of that particular loan. That customer may come up and pay me the total outstanding due or a part of it. That is all a contingency scenario. So all these things can be added to your contractual obligation in liquidity risk. Vijay Malik coming in. Yes, somebody has a question. Was it honest? No, it wasn't me. Okay. So these are the challenges, these are all theoretical discussions. So this is one slide which you can help while you discuss with customers mainly to highlight what are the key features of liquidity risk management. As I said ALM caters to liquidity, interest rate and basis risk. Then that liquidity in terms of regulations and regulations in place for any particular geography, how your liquidity looks like that is handled in risk liquidity risk management module or application. So it could be Basel 3 compliant, 
flexible definitions. You can create your own set of definitions in the application. Multiple scenarios you can create. If you want to see any impact of a particular business unit, that's also you can do. That is nothing but your stress scenarios. And counterbalancing. Nothing but assumptions. You can design it in the application itself. And it can be done at an account level. Need not be at a consolidated level also. I know it is a bit hard to digest everything in today's session, but uh, I hope we have a basic level of understanding on what the modules are. Somebody has a question, I think. Okay. Guys, any other questions? Because I am done with my session today. And there is a test at the end of this session for everyone. Rati sir has clearly instructed yesterday evening that to not to fail with the test because we only conducted the polls yesterday and we are about to start the test in some time now. If at all anyone has any questions, please let me know. You're getting the team to curse me now, huh, Ravi? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I'm just repeating what you... <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on mute now. <laughs> yes, Antanu, you have a question now. Yes, Antanu, please go ahead. Uh, uh, Somya, can you please unmute Santanu? Yes, Santanu, uh, that's uh, why. Yeah, Ravi, I uh, wanted to know why do we have uh, liquidity risk uh, management under the EPM pillar? Uh, because no, that, liquidity that, risk is a part of risk management. It, it should be ideally under ERM. So I have to design it in a form like it is under uh, the EPM uh, pillar. No, it is. But, uh, you know, completely under ERM vertical. As I said, transfer pricing and profitability, what we discussed yesterday, that is coming under EPM. ALM and LRM, that is completely under ERM from OPSA perspective. Okay, but this is this is under ERM, right? The doubts, yes. The doubts, why it comes up, you know, this is because of the scenarios of the vertical we are into, that is nothing but banking. These are all interrelated. From OPSA per se, we do a distinction with EPM, ERM, but as a bank, for a treasury, it is all the same, which is coming under treasury. Okay. That okay. is why the confusion is. Otherwise, whenever you hear a word risk, that is coming under ERM straight away. Okay. Okay. Just like ALM also. By OPSA perspective, it is under uh, ERM, but yes, from bank's point of view, it is always under uh, performance. Okay. Since we are talking about OPSA, this is the segregation, transfer pricing, profitability under EPM, ALM, LRM under ERM. Okay, any other points guys? Because I am done with my session for today. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. you would like to highlight anything on this today's session? Or you would like to add a few points on this? Maybe a couple of questions or I would like to have... Uh, Hope it is all easy. Just like yesterday. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Everything is easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, so liquidity risk management is typically coming as a Basel three requirement, uh, which is for much more matured banks. Okay. Yes. While yes. ALM uh, is still a requirement for each and every bank for every their own. Bank. Yeah. So what kind of advice you want to give our sellers, you know, when they go and discuss with the customer that mm -hmm. how ALM is important while liquidity risk management, at least regulatory purpose, it is just coming later, even if they are not on Basel 3. 
uh, you know what kind of pitch a sales person should make so that uh, you know uh, they can make the okay. LMs for all this model set. Very very good point Keda. It is as simple as as we discussed yesterday between a differentiation between performance management and risk management or compliance per se. Performance management gives me a true profitability picture of the bank. If I have enough funds I can go with automation for risk management models which will help me to do regulatory reporting in an automated way. Likewise, if I do not have ALM engine today with me, which gives me a picture of liquidity internal per se from the bank's perspective, I will not be able to do a regulatory requirement, uh, you know liquidity reporting which is uh, compliant to your regulatory guidelines which is handled in LRM. So likewise, after FTP then comes profitability same way after ALM comes LRM. So as you clearly highlighted the first and starting point for any bank to look into the liquidity concept it will start with ALM only and it is very much mandatory for any bank. Then it comes as a choice for other banks whether they want to go ahead with LRM very specific or use the output of ALM as an input to prepare their internal regulatory reports which can be handled manually also. Perfect. Uh, any other pointer you can suggest which will suppose for, for example uh, uh -huh. uh, some some bank has already implemented some ALM solution okay and in that case if we still have to go and make uh, some other sale for example FTP and profitability or vice versa FTP and profitability uh -huh. have implemented something else and I want to go and sell ALM what is the advice or suggestion you can make, we can do, we should do. It is basically if we go to any bank or pitchin, no, we have to see what kind of vertical they are into, if it is more retail based or wholesale based or both or rather I will look into the balance sheet, what kind of systems are in place, what kind of source system they maintain and what kind of product offerings they do. Depending on that we can make a, a detailed plan and as I said yesterday also it is very dynamic in nature. Uh, it is all case to case basis we can do our analysis. But priority is always from my perspective of my understanding so far. We should go with performance then to risk. Okay, okay. A couple of points I would request if you can highlight also that uh, the OPSA is very strong in ALM uh, in market, right? Uh, maybe okay. I just want to leave that impression with sales team is that mm -hmm. uh, this is really, uh, really solution. Then I would beg to differ here slightly if it is only about ALM. The SunGuard okay. ALM engine is much more stronger than outside ALM because there are some other functionalities which are available under SunGuard. But yes, it is not about standalone ALM we are talking about today. We are talking about many more verticals. We are talking about transfer pricing, profitability, balance sheet or any other performance suit of products. I am talking about Oracle financials also then it's coming to other risk areas like liquidity risk, market risk, credit risk. If I talk about an integration as a whole, the subject as a whole, then yes, we are much more ahead than competitors. If it is standalone, there are products, you know, uh, which can be for ALM, which are better than off ALM. It's a practical scenario I'm giving you today. Certainly, I would like to agree with you, uh, Rabi, but at the same time, good that you highlighted the off overall value proposition. My pointer was more to the some of the tier two products are also available in ALM, uh, yeah. ALM area. Okay, yeah. for example, the soft and all. Uh, they may face, uh, you know, we may face this as a competition somewhere. So, so, so as you have highlighted, one is that we can we can give customer the unified value of OFSA and, yeah. and uh, change the game in terms of number of modules and requirement. Show the customer the bigger picture of various modules of risk management and performance management which we can bring to the table and then then handle the competition. Similarly at the yeah. same time we can also speak about the enriched features. I think then Ravi can uh, you know take over and control the situation for us. Yes. I think and two, three points. Go ahead Ravi. Yes. That is it uh, Kedar you have highlighted the points and if we are talking about a complete unified concept, yes, this is where we 
we stand for and we are much ahead than our competitors are, which our competitors, I mean, where they stand as of today. Apart from that, it is, uh, as we discussed yesterday, it is a phase-wise implementation for any bank, if I start with. So it is not only we are going to engage with the bank as of today, what the position are, we are trying to visualize or we are going to give them an architecture which is going to help them over a period of time, maybe 5 years or 10 years down the line and it will really reflect in their ROI, return on investment. Because as I said yesterday, I used the word capex, it is a capital expenditure for any bank to go ahead with analytical solution implementation. So it is not only limited to a particular subject, we are talking the entire suit as a whole. So this way, OPSA is going to be very, very helpful to banks than any other solution. Yeah, Janta has a question from my... Janta, please go ahead. Hey, uh, Ravi. Yes, sir. Ravi, I have a very, very basic question here. Uh, let's say yes. there is a scenario where the head of uh, uh, Tracy or the risk. Yeah, talking yes, to only the tier two partner on a on a modular basis. He let's say he's looking at an ALM. Okay, now we uh -huh. we make an entry into the account, okay. and we have to you know a position of sa, which you know. So what would be that you know uh, that pitch uh, you know the functional pitch that we should give it to him? Okay, be, uh -huh. he being a functional guy. Okay. Uh -huh. So that he starts deviating from that, you know, tier two solution to 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 OPSA as an overall, you know, solution for the for the bank. So can uh -huh. you help me out with that, please? Yeah. Uh, this question, I would really, uh, uh, you know, direct it to Kedar. He is an expert in this particular area, and I'll yeah. be talking more of the subjects for today, Jayanta. Uh, Kedar. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jayanta. You raised this question. In fact, that's what I wanted. However, I actually wanted even Ravi to contribute in this specific to the uh, to the product and highlighting uh, some of the features of the product. Okay, if I am uh, you know typically I have seen this uh, seen this situation. When there are two three methods in which uh, I have approached the situation, and many a times I have seen success, many a times I have seen failures as well. So there are two ways. Okay, Officer, first of all, uh, is a is a platform based solutions okay yesterday we discussed about opsa value that it has a unified architecture wherein you have it has a unified data model then the, it has an infrastructure layer okay if you could recall and there is also a top level bi layer okay mm -hmm. now in that architecture what it have what it provides you it provides you a lot of ready made tools okay and flexibility at each level, okay, data model comes up with a lot of functionalities of its own. The infrastructure comes up with a lot of functionalities of its own. Okay, for example, rule engine, form builder. Then the BI layer comes up with a lot of end user facilities of its own. Okay. Okay. So it gives them the enormous power in the hands of the user to not only to go live but to handle the changes required. We are in the field of regulatory compliance field wherein the regulations are coming every six months, one year, two years down the line. And if you want to go and change certain things, for example, certain thresholds, in a grounds of builded coded applications, which are typically tier two applications, which are written on Java or .NET, it's a big and difficult task, okay, compared to a platform based solution, right? So you can highlight to them that the time to adopt, time to market, and secondly, the ease of handling or ease of maintenance with the business user is much more with platform-based solution like Opsum. Okay, this has typically been accepted. Okay. okay. Second thing which uh, we discussed yesterday about the unified value. Let us always try to take the person or the take the bank senior level. Okay, not at the procurement level who is looking for the procurement of a particular solution. But let's take it one level up, right? Let us discuss about their requirement today and down the line one year, two years, and what is the regulator is thinking, discussing, asking them, right? Once we start in that kind of a discussion, you will come to know there are a few other things are also looming around. Along with ALM, they would be also talking about risk management, you know, certain compliances. They would be also having some challenges on the profitability side.
if the discussion is prioritizing the areas that the bank is looking for or maybe okay, priority would be i think they would have set for the lm procurement but the other areas you need to bring on priority for this decision making okay right and you could possibly do that and show customer the larger picture they, then then this change changes right so first point can give you some value in terms of a differentiation second point gives you a different playing ground or different rules they will treat the other solution as a point solution and offsa as a solution as a strategic solution right uh, kedar just one question here let's say there is a discussion coming up uh, starting with epm right and then we talk about uh, profitable transfer price and profitability so and so forth and then we then how do i drive this discussion uh, towards erm saying okay there is a probably you know so the risk that they have to look at then if erm is a uh, risk is taken care of you know or, or probably a, uh, alm is taken care of and they can the liquidity part is also kind of you know they can look at so how do i drive this discussion there actually very good question that you asked that's where we said that lm for bank is a performance point okay right. so when you said you so you are talking about a performance at a treasury level yesterday we discussed okay. about fpp profitability were absolute numbers okay right. but lm actually tells us how to deal with the situation in terms of cash flows right so that's a right. performance aspect so we can say okay. if you are looking at the performance level but at the same time because of that performance problems there are a lot of risk associated with which which ravi discussed today liquidity risk basis risk and interest rate risk okay and same risk are essentially required for basel 3 compliance okay basel 3 has associated risk management framework in which liquidity risk management in basel 3 is a essential addition it was not there in basel 1 basel 2 and basel 3 okay. is also around in to the by year 2018 there is a mandate going on for basel 3 earlier to 2016 okay. now it has gone to 2018 So, if we connect that ALM to like liquidity risk management and Basel compliances, definitely customer will start looking at the overall thing. Secondly, yes. Secondly, whatever whatever pointers we said now was yesterday we said about the typical value of the solution. Once you populate certain data for say ALM, same data is required for liquidity risk management solution, right? And for a few other things too. So, you don't have too many solutions to. Uh, you know implement build too many projects to be done too many etls to be built to source system right so just try to highlight to the customers that oh my god there too many projects would be there happening in the organizations just try to create some psyche you know many a times as a sales person we have to go and you know create a hype around something so just you just have to create some hype around that because otherwise is going to be too many things at your head incremental too much of cost too much of ever especially at the it people right how will you manage so many project if you do it once next time you are going to do only delta give some concept around that and it sells by practically by experience i am telling you it sells yeah. ravi uh, beyond this if you feel is there anything which i can uh, i should have added or if you can add uh, okay uh, you have touched upon all the areas i would say rather you have answered it much much better than what i could do for this question Okay, thanks, Kiran. Yeah. Guys, any other question? Or we are all geared up to start the test now. Come here, can you do that? Yeah, yeah. I'm just launching the test now. Okay. All the best.
Yes, Swamya, where do we see the outcome of the test?
que no le...
25% submitted. So Samir will be able to view the result now or how is it? Uh, those who submitted they will see the correct answer and with the their score. Okay, nothing for the for the presenter, is it? Uh, no, nothing for presenter and organizer. Okay, yeah, that is wrong. That is wrong. The presenter should have been see, should have, <laughs> should know exactly who is getting what. <laughs> Sir, in that case, now Somia is going to send us the consolidated ALM report. <laughs> <Related to this. laughs> the presenter and organizer are the know who knows the questions, so we will get a hundred percent answer. <laughs> no, no, they have a, what professor is saying, we have a right to know the scoring. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll get, uh, we'll get the test report uh, within 15 minutes. So I'll share with you all. Well, I think everybody has submitted now. Yeah, 83%. So after that, uh, you have a feedback session also. Kindly give the feedback about the uh, how how you feel about this session. So it also be important for us to give you better. Okay. So can that service sign up now or how is it? I think we should know. Okay. There's nothing. Yes, yes, yes. Honest. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to submit by. It's telling me, sorry, it appears you have already taken this test. How? <laughs> what yeah. I tried to yeah. Tome, can you help uh, Honest on this? Yeah, Honest, please. Please help. Hello? Yeah, Honest, are you able to hear yeah, me? Yeah, I'm trying to submit, but it's telling me. Yes, I'm able to hear you. Uh, yeah, tell me. Actually, your voice is not audible much. Uh -huh. I'm breaking. Your voice is breaking. No, I'm saying, I I'm trying to submit. Okay. But I'm getting a report that says, sorry, it appears you have already taken this test. Okay, so I, you don't know. To... I can't even see my marks. Okay, might be you, know, you just click on retest. So retest is not allowed here. So <laughs> once time what is recorded is recorded. No, I, I submit. I, I just okay, click on submit, did... then say sorry, it appears you have taken this test. Okay, can you please send us the screenshot so we can uh, give it to uh, uh, the uh, go to meeting guys about this uh, uh, issue. Thank you for raising this issue to us. So on this uh, end of the day, Somi has given you a very political answer and <laughs> you are escaped from the scoring. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I just, I just, I wanted to see my marks, but I mean, I can't now. <laughs> he will do a retest. I hope we have no more people who have similar problems. Huh? No. Yeah, 92% no. <laughs> has been submitted. So, can we know who else is left? Uh, I don't know. We need to actually the uh, system need 15 minutes to recalibrate the, all the uh, reports. So it takes uh, after 15 20 minutes uh, we will get to know who gave the test and what their progress and what their scores. Okay. okay. I think 100% submitted, so uh, we just uh, uh, wind up the session. Okay, okay. So thank you all for joining today's session.
and hope it yeah, will help everyone. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Thank you. And kindly give the feedback to the session after the uh, turning over. Thank you.